Hey folks, welcome to part nine of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is gonna be true or false, you can embed external websites in Tableau dashboards, true or false. So what this is saying is you can actually have a website or web page showing as a component of your Tableau dashboard. So let's see if that's possible. We're gonna uh, pop right into Tableau over here and I'm gonna create a new dashboard. And you know, let's say I have a dashboard, I have all my visualizations here, some analytics, what have you. But then I also wanna maybe integrate um, and have another web page display here, right? So um, maybe I can go over here and add a, uh, add a vertical down here. And within that, maybe now I wanna integrate, you know, a web page, right? So you see under objects, you see web page. So I can click on that over here and now I can type in the URL. Now let's say, you know, for whatever reason, I want some inspiration. I wanna really grow my business. So I'm actually gonna link the best YouTube channel on the planet as, um, as a web page, right? So I'm gonna click OK, and now I have this YouTube channel essentially appearing within my Tableau dashboard. And look how out, look how great that is. That that is awesome. So if you haven't already, you should check out this channel. Be sure to subscribe because uh, there's a lot of good stuff, and I'm sure your business will succeed. Uh, but again, going back to the main question here, you can embed external websites as you just saw. So this one's gonna be true. By the way, jokes aside, if you do like videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, what does the group feature in Tableau Desktop allow? Does it allow the grouping of members of dimensions together, the grouping uh, of users together, grouping visualizations together, or to cluster data automatically? Which of these is it gonna be when we talk about grouping data? Um, so first, let's reference the Tableau documentation here, which talks about grouping your data. What does it say? You can create a group to combine related members in a field. So what exactly does that mean? We're gonna go back into Tableau, and I will show you a fresh example. So let's go into a fresh sheet over here. And uh, let's say I'm just looking at, um, you know, maybe quantities by subcategory or, uh, or something to this effect, right? And um, I want to maybe group two of these subcategories together. So I want accessories and appliances to just be bucketed under one thing, right? So it's going to be one line item and instead of, you know, seeing the 2976 and the 1750 broken out, I just want them to be combined, right? So I can highlight two at a time here. I can right click and then where you see this paper clip icon, even if you had a visualization and not a table, you would still see that if you were to right click, uh, if you were to right click, you'll see that clip icon. So I'm gonna click that and you'll notice here, now they're grouped together. It says accessories and appliances and you'll notice the number here did update as well because now it's taking the collective sum of both of those. So I can actually, uh, if you see here, that's where the group is now, right? It's called subcategory group one. I can right click and go to describe and see what's actually going on underneath. And you'll notice it has 16 members, right? Uh, so essentially what this is doing is uh, all of those subcategories is basically a member um, within this. So what does it do? It's actually a way to group members uh, for a given dimension, in this case, subcategory. In contrast to the other options here, does it group users together? No, that's more of like a Tableau server administrative side functionality. And if I remember correctly, the correct terms used there would be something like, uh, I believe local group, if you were to set up a custom group of users uh, to you know set up access. And I think the alternative would be uh, Active Directory and that way it would automatically sync to your Active Directory profile. So that's not gonna be the solution. Third option, grouping visualizations together. Again, that's not something we did here. This has been just one visualization from the beginning. All we did was consolidate those members into a single group. Um, if you were talking about maybe consolidating you know, views, it would probably be something like this where you have a dashboard and you use containers to kind of group uh, visualizations together, but that's not really an official feature or, or terminology that you'd use. Last option, clustering data. Again, that's not gonna be the right solution either. That's something when you kind of go into the analytics pane and you have somewhat of a chart, you can use the cluster function here but that's not gonna be the solution. The only correct solution here is gonna be grouping members of dimensions together. Next question, um, what does publishing a workbook to Tableau Public allow? Remember, Tableau Public is the public facing 
uh, server of Tableau where anyone you know is free at this moment in time to build a visualization in Tableau Desktop uh, Public Edition and upload that to Tableau, Tableau Public where everyone can see it. Uh, obviously, no uh, no sense of security or permissions or anything like that there. Um, but yeah, so which of these would that enable? Sharing via a link, embedding in websites, offline access, setting subscriptions, or refreshing data extracts. So if I go over here and I just happen to have a random visualization open over here, uh, and this is something that you could expect to see, right? So you have a number of options. You could make a copy of a visualization. Again, this isn't uh, you know Tableau Public, so you have access to this as well. Uh, you can favorite it if you are, uh, I believe, logged in. You have a share button. You can actually download this uh, in multiple formats. So image, not data, cross tab, PDF, PowerPoint, and Tableau workbook. Uh, you do have some control if you really wanted to. You could maybe disable the ability to download the workbook. Uh, but yeah, you could also nominate for viz of the day. But if you go to share over here, you will notice, so there's an embed code, and that's what you would use if you wanted to integrate this into a website. So if you have like an HTML page, you would use this div tag, insert it somewhere, and voila, you would essentially have this visualization embedded into uh, a website. And the second option, if you just wanted to kind of share this, you know, uh, you could just click copy link over here, paste it somewhere, and when someone clicks on the same link, they will have access to the same visualization. So right away, uh, obviously sharing via link uh, is one of the correct solutions. Also embedding in websites is also a viable solution. Does it give you offline access? No, because again, this sits on a server. It's Tableau's public server. If you're not connected to the internet, you will not be able to access it. So it doesn't give you offline access. Does it allow you to set subscriptions? We didn't see that option. Again, we went through uh, all of these options, none of which allowed you to be able to set up a subscription and have this email to you via an email or PDF. So that can't be the correct solution. Last option, refreshing data extract. So uh, there's really no sense of refreshing data here uh, on an incremental basis or even manually going in and refreshing and extract. Again, this is Tableau public, so it doesn't have a whole lot of features. If you did want to refresh the data, you'd probably have to download it refresh it locally, then republish it. Because again, there is no sense of uh, being able to schedule or uh, refresh data on the fly. And again, there might be an option through edit data. I'd have to check that information because you are able to edit. If this was your own dashboard, you can edit uh, on the web. Uh, but again, there's no sense of, you know, right click, refresh, extract data as you normally would see on a private Tableau server. So the only correct solutions here are going to be the first two options. You can share via link and you can embed in a website. Next question, which feature should uh, be used in Tableau to automatically categorize geographical data based on names? Is it geocoding, data extraction, spatial files, or mapping? So again, we're gonna go into this documentation, which talks about uh, exploring geocoding in Tableau. And this is actually more of a blog where uh, they kind of walk you through the process, uh, but also there's official Tableau documentation right here, right? So it talks about geocode locations Tableau does not recognize and plot them on a map. So long story short, Tableau does have a bunch of uh, different geographic areas and you know, based on zip codes, they know exactly how to map certain ge geographic regions. But at the end of the day, it's not a comprehensive database, right? It's not pulling this information live. So there are gonna be instances such as with street addresses where Tableau doesn't necessarily recognize it. Maybe you want your specific street address or uh, the area you live in to be colored a certain way or to be recognized in Tableau. Tableau by default is not gonna be able to recognize that. In fact, there's a whole list of uh, different areas and metadata around which countries and you know how many cities, counties, etc. they support. But if you did want Tableau to recognize that, you're able to do that by something uh, similar to setting up a CS, uh, CSV file with the necessary metadata. So for example, you have your country, your state, your coordinates, your latitude, longitude. That's going to enable Tableau to be able to pinpoint exactly how to generate that graph, if that makes sense. So that's the official term. Geocode, geocoding is the official term when you want Tableau to automatically recognize 
uh, or categorize geographical data based on names. It's not going to be data extraction, obviously. It's not going to be spatial files. There is a sense of mapping happening when you go through this route of creating your own map, so to speak, with uh, you know using the latitude, longitude. But the official term here, because that's what we're talking about on the exam, the official terminology is going to be geocoding. So just keep that in mind. That's going to be the solution here. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always be sure to like if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and of course as always I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.